And for me to go to an institutional investor or the financial market and say, hey, I want to go spend $200 million or $300 million to do a project, they would just say, well, show me an example of it and then we'll finance it. Here's our challenge with Wall Street. Underwriting real estate investment in America is based on one cash flow from use rents. And are we then analyzing the rents for a particular use or are we analyzing them for place? No. In America, we analyze them based on use. And the reason we do that is because we want to bundle those debt instruments to resell them in the secondary market. And so this is not a question of risk. It's a question of matching the appropriate underwriting tool with the appropriate risk profile. It's not that Wall Street is afraid of the risk profile, it's that they don't know how to assess it because the cash flows are more diversified when you're talking about place that equals multiple uses. That's the key. And your point, which is if you have multiple ownership and it's atomized, well, if this ownership and this business fails, it will be replaced by a different use. And that use, that new use is going to be in a context of success because even though this owner doesn't own this or this, we know from a design perspective what's going to be next to us, whether it's 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. Great walkable neighborhoods. And so we don't care what the use is next to us. We just care that it's predictable in terms of the character. That's why downtowns maintain their value over time. Wall Street is not set up to assess that kind of risk. It's only set up to securitize cash flows based on use. That's the primary problem, is that your audience doesn't understand this piece. And it's our challenge to explain how use rents in a cash flow model that is underwriting risk actually can be translated into a place type where you have a diversification of different uses. I think it's that simple. So I started on this journey on my own. And the first project that I did in America is a project called Adriatica, which is located in McKinney, Texas. Currently, I'm the, uh, the builder in Adriatica. Throughout my career, I've built both residential and commercial construction. It served me well as I came here to Adriatica. We're building retail, commercial, business uh, construction in, a, in, in the truest sense of mixed use. About four or five years ago, my wife and I were traveling to Croatia. Traveling throughout the, the, the country of Croatia and through Split and Supitar, um, it, it truly caught my eye, and, and probably more so on that trip than any other trip. But just, I don't know, this case in particular, and specifically Supitar, we spent some time uh, in Supitar and on the island of Brac and became really fascinated with it. Uh, so much so that on the flight home, my wife and I talked about um, now, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be fantastic if uh, a village like, like Branch, uh, uh, Supitar, was built in America? Something that really captured um, what it is that we, as most people that travel over there, uh, become enamored with and, and fall in love with. Part of what makes Adriatica work and what's so appealing to it is the fact that it's so diverse in its design and the fact that we're not building boxes that we're trying to fill up with tenants. We're bringing in tenants and letting them tell us what the boxes look like. I have asked some of the greatest planners, city planners, urban planners of our time. And the question I ask them is real simple. If new urbanism is on a scale, and let's say the scale is a 10, and let's say there are three or whatever you want to call them, what is a 10? The zero is somebody just building a house down the street. And then we have subdivisions. And then we have master planning communities. And then we have new urbanism. And I ask these guys, what, what, if, if that's a zero, what's this? This is a 10, what is this? What do we call this? And a 10 is a village. New urbanism in its finest, if you could build it perfect, is a village. So that's the scale. Let's call this five. New urbanism has only probably gotten to a three. The most you could ever be, the closest you probably could ever get to a village is probably a seven. Because you'll never be able to figure out exactly the evolution of a village. Adriatica, or the new word, neo retroism is probably a five. Because it's the first one of its kind to actually build the evolution of a village. This scale, zero to ten, and ten being a village, what is a village? A village equals form plus function plus evolution over people. It could be anywhere in the world, but here's how generally a village is formed. You're in Croatia and you're on the coast. I think the idea of, of villagers 
coming together for a, com a commerce purpose is already into a uh, certain evolution of the uh, of the village. But it's if you look at our ages, if we just start out on a spectrum, we have the agrarian era, if you will. During that period, there were very few villages because everybody more or less took care of themselves. So these all started out fairly small. Like you said, you'd have um, an area where people would gather. Maybe this is the coastline here. And this is an island or a just the edge of an, uh, the mainland. It would start out very small, maybe just a small collection of individuals. As time went on and we became more industrial, that really started to hit its stride in about the 1890s. That's not all that long ago in the history of man. We're only talking about 120 or so years ago. From that point, let's, let's say 1890s, to about 1950, the U.S. was growing in a basically small villages. There was only 100 million people in, in the United States in, in uh, 1915. We were all small collections and small communities. We didn't have cars, largely, so if you had to go to work, you went by foot, or you went maybe by horse, or maybe you went by rail. Uh, so you could say that a lot of our urban form is defined by transportation, whether it's your own feet, or an animal with four feet, or a vehicle with four wheels. So the, the more technologically advanced our transportation became, the larger the footprint of our cities became. But something changed in, in 1950, and it was the returning GIs, it was the creation of the interstate highway system, it was the offering of low interest loans. All of a sudden you have this boom in generation. And from 1950 on through today, we've essentially been building the same way. In 1950, the average house size, I think, was 900 square feet. 2000, the average garage of a new house was 900 square feet. So now, not only is our urban form getting larger, but the buildings are getting larger. Unnecessarily so. Most of this development has been for the storage and conveyance of cars and trucks. We've forgotten how to walk. So what happens in, in the, the last two to three years, say from 2009 to 2012, we start hearing about things like childhood obesity, shorter lifespan, quality of life going down. Why is this happening? If, if the best minds are developing urban forms that are supposed to meet the marketplace, why are things so bad? It's because we're not really doing what we should be doing. We're doing what developers have traditionally done because it's simple, it's understandable to them, and I think it's because the banks and the financial institutions are familiar with that form. The uh, UN did a study that said more people lived in cities for the first time on global, all over the planet. More than 50% of the population was urbanized. So we've, we've had a sort of this um, approach where we've gone like that, and then we, naturally we're now doubling back. One very, very a uh, small example is green space. This is something that almost every new urbanist project either tends to forget or they put on the side. The church would be you know, freestanding and then right next to it would be the graveyard. To, to emphasize the importance of green space, okay, so now it's not a cemetery, now it's a park, that green space linked directly to all of the development and made it a better place to be. So whether you could see it, or walk to it, a five minute walk is about a quarter mile radius. That adds value and ownership to that neighborhood. That's what we, I think we have lost in our subdivisions. They don't they have parks, they have resident amenity centers or whatever they're called. You know, we're trying to create a, this linear equation of how humankind has developed over hundreds of years or thousands of years, it's a real challenge. We got to this point slowly, we got to this point slowly. We've actually done this a little more rapidly because of the nature of technology and development. But I think that's also shown that there's a disconnect. So I sat around with a guy whose name is J.D. Lee, and we were talking about this, and he says, you need to come up with a word. So he came up with this word called neo-retroism. 